funny. I did that wrong again. Darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. How do I change that? to resume it if it's already on. Hmm. It's impossible to figure out if you don't have somebody. Frustrating. Can you guys hear me? Hi guys. Can you hear me? Oh, feedback. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, and I just forgot that you can hear me, so I'm sitting here typing. Uh, yes, I was talking to myself. I didn't realize that um, I had um, tried to figure this out all by myself and again this time. Well, last time I had a little help, and um, I wasn't sure where the screen was. I was seeing an old chat, and I was like, what's going on with this? And and then I remembered, and I, um, I found you, and I'm here. And... Um, there really isn't any uh, topics, so to say. Yeah, I was trying to answer myself back, Pad. Um, I gave myself the right answer because it worked. Um, but there's not really a topic per se today, but I did want to uh, make an announcement that I'm going to cancel um, a scheduled doomsday show that I had, event, live show, whatever, that I had scheduled to be for everybody so it wasn't just something for me, it was for, um, it's like an open house party kind of thing. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. 
And um, I just wanted to let everybody know, give it, kind of give a heads up for anybody who was planning that. So, um, I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, the nuns? <laughs> what noons? What are you talking about? No, I, and there was nothing random about the nuns that day. That's completely true. Um, but also, along with the um, cancellation notice that I just wanted to put out there, so anybody thought that, um, you know, wanted to have any kind of reasoning behind it, there really isn't. I just, um, I figured other people were going to do stuff, and there was really no reason for me to do it. Um, and I did want to, I did have a couple things that I would Talk, would like to talk about that I kind of had mine, but um, not sure how you guys feel about it. Anybody can come on. Um, I was reading a study that Harvard put out. Um, it's an older study, but um, it's from their Journal of Law and Economics. And um, <laughs> interestingly enough, it was about media. And I was a little miffed with the media this morning because um, I was scanning through the radio stations and I caught a part of Glenn Beck's program and I kind of swore that I would never listen to him um, but I <laughs> I went back on my swear and I caught a part of him it, it caught my attention because he was asking people for donations to match a donation that was turned in and um, for what, I don't really know. Oh, actually, he had ended up saying that the donations were going to, and I'm quoting this, to save Christians. And um, so I, I really didn't have a whole lot of background. I tried to remind myself to um, get, when you get home, Google what Glenn Beck's talking about. You know, what what do the Christians need saving? What's going on? And um, because I haven't followed any of his nonsense in a long time. So I, I did. I came home and I and I was reading. Um, I just googled it. I said, "What do? Why do Christians need saving?" Which was a mi big mistake because um, <laughs> it took me into a whole world of being saved um, spiritually. And so I was like, "Okay, what is Glenn Beck talking about? Christians need to be saved." And then it pulled it up. And apparently, um, he is trying to raise money to bring people from war torn Syria. Um, and I guess Iraq maybe too, um, but it's mostly Syria to pay for them to come here to the U.S. Um, but this is the thing he's going to do, I guess, from the, the articles I was reading, is he's planning on using the money to fly these families, Christian families only, um, into from Syria, I, I guess maybe from Israel or something, into to Mexico. And then if he has to, apparently he's going to walk them over the border himself. Um, so that's what the money he's looking to raise is going towards. Um, because um, I read a little further into it. I wouldn't give him up my time. But I read a little further into it. And he, um, I think we're all in agreement about fear porn and whatnot. And um one of the things that were in this article that mentioned in this article about something he said the other day last week was that um, Christians are literally being tagged they're at their houses the um, I haven't made a secret that I, I've never really I've never read the Bible um, but I've followed some storylines you know I've, I've watched some of the TV shows um, about the Bible and I've, um, you know, watched the old movies, you know, Moses and all that, whatnot. So I kind of have an idea of what the marking of the doors thing is. Um, and Glenn Beck was saying last week that this is what's happening to Christians in Syria. And I'm not an anti-Christian, so I don't want, you know, to make it come across like I, I have a problem with Christians. But it's, it's, I guess, kind of hard for me to believe that this, if we're at this kind of level of uh, Christians being s targeted solely over there for death or conversion is what the article went on to say that 
you have an option. You convert or you die um, at the hands of ISIS Muslims um, who are running Syria. And anyway, so he said they're marking the doors, giving these guys 24 hours. And if they don't convert, they're going to die. So he wants to raise money for us to get those guys, those Christians, out of there and bring them to Mexico so they can walk across the border. <laughs> and I guess we have to, if he's asking to also send money to support them after they get here, um, I'm sure they're going to have to eat. <laughs> I think it's a propaganda lie myself. Um, but um, nonetheless, that was that's what got me started into the whole train of thought about media and how absolutely I don't I don't even know the right words to use, but their propaganda and, and he is part of the media, right? And and I would consider him mainstream, even though I don't listen to him, and, and really nobody I know listens to him. I think my mom used to listen to him. I don't know, but um, he uh, he would be considered mainstream media, right? So um, he the media, the mainstream media in general, is pushing just so much propaganda. And I know that none of us are shocked and that's no new revelation or anything like that. But it kind of it got to me to where I was at the point of like, who, why, when did this happen? You know, it didn't always feel like that. And then I was thinking about the conversations we had the other day about um, uh, regarding 9-11. And, you know, I was thinking, well, maybe it did because, you know, <laughs> the only way I saw 9-11 was on television, on mainstream media, and then everything after the fact, I was told, you know, who was responsible via mainstream media, and, um, you know, so I guess, the you know, mainstream media is just, is, is really, you know, I don't even know if, it, if it's the greatest tool of evil or... Um, I, is it doing more damage than, you know, it, it doesn't sound like a fair comparison, but is it doing more damage than actual drone bombs? Um, I mean, you know, we, I'm just up in, the, up in the air with this right now. I, it really is. It's been called the fourth estate, you know, um, of government. And, and gosh, if it doesn't feel like it fits right in that description, too, because there's nothing to stop them anymore. What do you do? That's the only access people have. And then I was watching Mark Dice's video this morning, and I know that he gets a lot of crap about, um, you know, highlighting the stupidity of our fellow people, you know, fellow humanity, and and kind of like and using his time to make us look, not us in general, but, you know, us overall look stupid. Um, and, you know, make himself feel better than or something. I, I've read the criticisms, but, you know, it's often funny to see the to see him go out and, and ask these questions. Um, and then it, it, it occurred to me that he's media as well. So at the same time that he is, he's not mainstream Glenn Beck type media, but gosh, you know, Glenn Beck had to start off similar to to Mark Dice. I can't imagine how Glenn Beck became famous in the first place, but um, <laughs> but I well I watch Javon. I watch Mark Dice because um, he's they're just funny sometimes. But you know I'm coming around to see and I read the comments and and I see the people who are pointing out the not so great side of all these people that these channels that I find funny, but I really have been contemplating it and I really shouldn't find them funny. I should find the the part of the role they're playing and the overall impression I'm getting of the media. And like I said, um, I just wanted to go back and think about, you know, is the media really at the heart of our, uh, of our overall problem? If, if that wasn't there. And then I thought, well, that was what we all started off on YouTube for, right? Um, was to find a media, so to speak, that wasn't controlled by that fourth estate. 
and and then you know then the paranoia grew and and there was no telling it who to trust for that information and if that information was any more legit than the information we were receiving from the mainstream media and how do you tell how do you tell that's that's where I'm at and I was just wondering if anybody wanted to talk about that we could do that I I really don't have any solutions I really don't haven't come to the end of my my inquisition on the media I'm like I said, I was reading this Harvard study, and it's there for anybody to read. Um, it's a, regarding the media. Um, it's an interesting study. It's pretty long. I guess everything from Harvard is pretty long. But it's from the Journal of Law and Economics, and they did a really good um, rundown from the start, you know, breaking it down about they, they examined 97 countries and the, how the media firms are almost – overall unilaterally unilaterally owned by the government or controlled by the government in some way um, some form even the private owned media corporations are controlled to some extent by government even in the so to speak free countries but um, yeah so it's a good it's a good article or not article I guess study and um, it's it's starting to show me that it's not just me thinking that um, I agree that they are a very controlled school, but I think that this research I don't know how it would benefit them. To, this research isn't isn't benefiting the media very well. So I, I think that um, from what I'm reading so far is is not a positive thing of a study on the media so maybe um, you know one of the good actual legit studies have gotten through maybe this is the one I don't know but anyway so yeah that was my morning Glenn Beck really just enraged me and um, I think that he's doing a disservice to people and and scaring the shit out of people to be honest and um, I guess that if I was a Christian and sitting over here in the U.S. and hearing that, you know, somebody was being tagged for murder, for death, because they were a Christian, I would be very, very concerned. And um, I might donate the money. Oh, and part of his whole donation thing was um, the whole thing that I caught, the reason I caught it was because he's saying a vet, a 100% um, disabled veteran. And we all know how I am with veterans. <laughs> but 100% um, disabled veterans sent in a jar of money, supposedly, and um, as a donation to help these Syrian refugees come to Mexico and then eventually up to the U.S. And they count. It's, it, Glenn said it as if he actually sat down and counted the jar of money. I don't know if he did or if he was speaking as a we did kind of thing, a general thing. Anyway, he said he counted it. It was like $47.32 or something like that. This man had sent every dime, every penny that he had saved, apparently, and um, to Glenn Beck to help these Christians. And um, so he started a new challenge. And, it's, and he has a hashtag and everything. And um, it, the challenge is to at least match that. So he's, that was his request, and um, I couldn't take any more, so, you know, my thumb just instinctively hit scan, and Glenn was gone, so that ended that, but it didn't stop me from remembering to come home and Google the media thing, because I think that um, our problem is with the media. I don't, you know, where do you go to get it? Where do you go to get it? It really is just a, who, which, who do you believe, because... It's all personality here, and I mean, that's kind of being honest, in my opinion. You know, it's, do I believe you? Oh, I like you a lot, and you seem to present all the information and facts and and have supported facts and, and, and all that, and I like you, and, and you make great videos, and, you know, but then, you know, are you any different than, you know, what I'm going to get on MSNBC? So... I don't know. I, th I think that um, media, the whole difference is that, you know, there's still a growing fine line between mainstream um, acceptable and mainstream growing. 
So here we are, and I don't know, I don't know where we're headed with this, you know, because um, I just don't know. I just don't. It's a great outlet, and I'm glad that this is here, YouTube, and other sites, but I haven't been to the other ones. So, but from what I've heard, like the places where Jeff will put up videos when he gets booted off of YouTube, I guess when his channel gets taken down, they were uploading them on those other sites and I never went over there to any of them. So I didn't check them out. So I don't know if they're any good, but I mean, so uh, the bottom line is that there's other sites too, but I'm just pretty much, I stuck with um, not trying to have too much access to social media. I just want to keep it can controlled because with as little as I am on, I have already had a tendency to cause chaos. So, um, but I'm just looking for some, you know, where you can get the good stuff, you know, and I listen and, and part of me wishes that I just kept, you know, watching the goofy videos and by goofy, I mean the ones that, you know, talked about the Anunnaki and the Nerubu however you pronounce that planet, the brown, big brown, red planet that's coming. And, you know, those, I've, of course, I listened to those videos and watched those videos like I was watching sci-fi, you know, um, not taking it too seriously at all, but appreciating the work done and, and especially like the, the pictures and whatnot and the um, reptile pictures of people changing into those. those are funny and and it's better than cat videos sometimes on youtube but um i every once in a while i detox too much from the media and from the news and i need to know what's going on and i had um reached that point and that's why i came back to look for youtube and that's kind of how i fell further into what i guess pe some people call the truth or movement the chaser community and um a lot of people changed over like a course of a couple of years of of which direction they went into <laughs> and it's it's interesting to see more of the people who used to not be so into the reptilian type things go back into the transition into that now <laughs> which you would have thought i guess i would have thought that they were going the other way like getting away from being such um more on the sci-fi type of of um i don't want to call it information but um entertainment maybe infotainment um so yeah that that was cool and and um anyway that's all i was thinking of today but i wanted to make sure that i got that announcement out there and i'm not going to delete this video um, it's not scheduled to go private or be deleted at the end of it because I was not going to play any music. So I knew I could keep it up. And that way, uh, the news is out there. So it's not looking like it's a last minute deal when I don't hold the event. All right, I'm going to, there's a few people out there. Javon, hello. Pad, hello. For Skelly, hello. You're awesome. Um, I love that the pictures and memes you've been throwing up on Google Plus. You're you're right there with me. I I love when I get feel like I've you know got somebody that my mind's there with with the all the chemicals and stuff you know and that and just wanting to be healthy and happy and I hope that that's what everybody really wants. And let's see who else is here. I guess that's it. Um, seven people watching, but I only see you three guys. So um, if one of you would like to come on, I can be quiet and you guys can get, take the floor for a little while since we're live, or I can just wrap it up. So anybody want to come on? Scully, I know you tried to get on. Hey, Sh okay, I'll call you Sherry. That's much better. Um, I know you had tried to get on. I saw that you had tried to get on um, Lost Show yesterday and Grim Show. Um, if you would like, I can try to send you a link and see if you can get on here if you had something you wanted to say. Um, I don't want to talk anymore to Ron. And if not, we will just wrap it up. Will you enjoy your lunch? 
And I'm going to go ahead and close it out then since none of you guys want to talk. Yeah, chemtrails. Somebody said something weird to me yesterday um, about chemtrails. And I don't know if they were being sarcastic or not. Um, I think it was me and you were talking, had talked about it, Pad, or not really talked about it, but mentioned something in a chat. Uh, do you, is it you that lives underneath um, a major airport? Oh, okay. Well, I will send you a link. Hold on one second. Still new to this, and the last time, you know, I did this, I went crazy so a little bit, so... Hold on one second. I wasn't really paying attention is my point. Hold on. Okay, I have to give you... Oh, O'Hare, that's right. That's what you said. Hold on one second. I'm going to add you. Okay. I sent that, so hopefully you got that. Yeah, I mean, I still, I'm like, you think it would be just click and go, but yeah, you still have to do a few things to get it right, I guess, and to get it running. And there are, like I said, options at the end of your show and options for, did you guys have to click the um, 18 and up thing before you came in? Because I did, I think I restricted that. That was one of those tips that Grim gave me, that it's just safer than sorry. So... All right, Pat, um, did you get that? I probably did that wrong, too. And Sherry, too, just in case you wanted to come on later in a minute when you're done. I'm tempted to turn on the music, but I know that I can't do that because I didn't set the the private button. In a minute when you're done. Okay. Hey. Did you see me? I, I, I wanted to be on, on through my computer instead of I my phone. No, I don't see you, but I can hear you. I okay. You, okay. You. Yeah. Oh, I, I heard what you said. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm listening to you. I'm going to have to mute your live show. Um. Here's my number. Take down my number. And maybe we can talk later or something because I'm eating and, I, and I'm still trying to figure out Google. And not only that, these son of a bitches at YouTube, they're fucking censoring. They're even putting a time limit. Like with only six or seven people on your show, Twit, they're, they're actually timing. I, I had to wait 19 seconds to, to respond back to you. Are you serious? I'm fucking serious. And they did this shit yesterday too. And it's just bullshit. Yeah, did you see Grim was getting knocked off every five seconds off of his own show yesterday? No, I, I didn't. I didn't. You know, everything was just a mess. You know, I, I, had, I seen what was going on, and I just turned it off. Man, I was getting too pissed. Yeah, well, I, I'll take your number, but it's gonna be. You want to just send it to me, maybe through um, Google. I'm not worried. About it. They can uh, hear it. I don't care. It's fucking fine. You know what? It's okay because okay. they're coming down too. You motherfucker. <laughs> Shit's coming down too. So I hope you recorded that. Your shit's coming down too. Okay. Area code 509. Okay. 942. Okay. 8816. 8816. And it's Sherry, right? Yeah, Sherry. Okay. Um, I will I can give you a call in a little while. You go eat your lunch. <laughs> okay, but 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 uh and 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 um I don't gonna want to get back on there. You know, I just I gotta figure out even Skype is screwed up, you know that. Uh, well, yeah, I don't, I use the, um, I have an iMac, so I don't use, I use FaceTime, but, um, yeah, I've noticed, I've, I've heard many stories and it's been like this last couple weeks, it's been really bad. Okay. Really well, bad. I don't really get back to other people and stuff too, so, but anyway, all right. I've never done this on my phone before. This is the first time. Well, you know what? It's good to know that your phone is turning, is picking up a picture because, you know, I had heard that, um. A lot of people, can you see chat from your phone too? 
Um, right now I can only see, I've got, it's got the selfie thing on, so it looks like it's got me on, and, and uh, that's it. That's, I can see myself in the small oh, picture. Okay. Because you're coming right through Google Hangouts then. Oh, or did, did Pat, Pat join the call? Pat, yeah, did you see that? Yeah, I did. Hi, Pat. All right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to jump hey. off here so that you can visit and, and I can listen to Pat, okay? Oh, okay. And well, I'll call you later. But, you know, I gotta eat. My food's still gonna get cold. <laughs> okay, I'll call you later. All right, thanks. All right, okay, bye. Bye. Hey, Pad. How, How are, are you? you? I'm great. How are you Pretty doing? Pretty good. <laughs> Not too bad. I was just out mowing the lawn, so I'm a little sweaty. <laughs> I'll sign out. So you got to talking about this media thing, and and uh, you know it's. And the Glenn Beck thing. I was a big Glenn Beck fan uh, towards the end of a CNN time period and for a short period of time uh, after he uh, uh, built his own studio up. So I'm familiar with the infatuation with his point of view concept. <laughs> so what was he like back then? Uh, he was different than he is now. That's for darn sure. Um, and I don't know if he was real then or not because um, I think my perception of reality was somewhat distorted. Yeah, because I wasn't as knowledgeable as I am now. That's a great point. That's a super point. Because we're all changing, right? <laughs> Every single second we learn something. We if we if we stay the same, you know, we're dead. <laughs> you know, I just can't imagine staying the same. No. So he is, um, so if we were to assume that he is changing as well, then he changed from being, would we say, agnostic to being a fundamentalist or um, less political into a political person? Or what kind of change did you see from him? Because I, right now I see him as kind of a fundamentalist. I don't know what kind, but. <laughs> um, well, uh, um First of all, he's not who he is. He is who he's told to be. He represents the the player that they want him to be. Okay, so by describing him as who he is is not accurate because it's not who he is. It's who he is told to be. Does okay. that make sense? It does, but I was under the impression that... Um, I didn't do a lot of research, but I did want to know at least who I was looking at, you know, and, and dealing with. Um, is he not now on his own and he did that because he didn't or supposedly did not want to be a controlled person anymore? Or am I? That's his story. That's his oh. story. And he may have believed that at the time. I don't know. But in fact, in my, op my uh, opinion, that is not what really took place. Huh. Um, and, and I guess what he believes took place or wants us to believe took place, um, I guess really doesn't matter because the end result is is that he's an, um, uh, pushing the ideas, pushing the concept, concepts of the Mormon church. Matter of fact, he's a, he, he's a high Mormon elder, as a matter of fact, which in order to be a high Mormon elder, the only thing you got to do is you got to shuck out a lot of money, but you also have to buy in to their occultism. Uh, the Mormon, I'm, I'm here just underneath O'Hare, and uh -huh. uh, down by St. Louis, or almost St. Louis, uh, halfway down the state of Illinois, uh, is a little town where the Mormon church really came into its own. And it came into its own uh, in a Freemason temple. Okay, so in other words, the services of the early uh, Mormon church were not in a church. They were part of and, and of the Freemason temples. Wow. Yeah, so if you, you got to, so in other words, if you want to learn what the Mormon church is, it won't make any sense to you unless you understand Freemasonry because that's its foundation. In other words, it, it's all based upon finding these golden tablets that were inscribed with uh, Egyptian uh, script or whatever they call it, what, what do they call that, hieroglyphs that was found in uh, uh, the Northeast United States underneath a log or a rock or something, you know. Sorry, right? 
What's that? It was in Missouri, right? Uh, no, I think that I think the uh, it was in Massachusetts or someplace. I think is where those uh, that golden tablet that may have existed, but not likely existed. So okay, so yesterday, I think it was yesterday. Weren't we talking about the Catholic Church being um, Masonic in nature too? The 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 high ups are as well. The the high ups are. But you got to remember that you get, there's two things going on here. You've got the the church for the masses, okay, and then you've got the church for the hierarchy of the church, and there's no comparison between the two, because one is designed to feed revenue and manpower and recruiting uh, into the higher one. So, um, it's it, to, to best describe it, it's like, uh, let's say I wanted to be a drag racer for a living. Well, there's no way you can make a living for a drag racer, so what you do is you go out and you start a garage, right? And you fix cars, and you use those funds to feed your habit of being a drag racer. But they have nothing in common with one another. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Okay, so, that's, what the, that's what the Catholic Church is. It's those two parts. You got the drag racer portion of it, and then you got uh, the people that go to the shop to get their car fixed, which funds the drag racer. Okay, it makes total sense to me. And, and also, I would have to say that the church portion, um, not the, well, both of them, the, the um, people who are taking their cars to the shop and, and the drag racer itself, himself, um, both came before Masonic or Masonry, or I'm assuming they did because, or is it not that way? Did Masonic people come first and then organize the church? I, I'm, I mean, it seems like they're everywhere. Well, the, the, the words are a weapon, okay? So um, I'm going to choose my words very carefully because okay. words, words have been historically the biggest meanest, deadliest, most powerful tool that has ever been created. <laughs> I understand. And, yeah, and, and what I mean by that is, is that but when we say the term Masonic, if you don't understand everything about Masonic, but only a portion of it, then what your brain goes to is what you know about uh, Freemasonry. So, I gotcha. Okay. So, in, in the military, let's say they're going to build a secret weapon, okay, or they're, or, or they're going to go on a secret mission, okay, so they break it down to uh, the different departments, and some of those might be uh, the, the, the tra transportation, the acquisition, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Air Force, the Army, the Navy, and all of them have a job to do, okay. They're more like the flutes in the front line of an orchestra. Each one has a different part that they're playing, and they only come together for moments at a time, but they're reading their own sheet of music, and they cannot see what anybody else has on their sheet of music, so they don't know what is going, what the outcome is going to be until they hear the whole thing together. Okay? Wow. Th th does that make sense? So oh, yeah. in other words, the only person that knows what's going on is the guy with the wand in the front. The orchestra, the orchestrator, or the um, conductor. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, in other words, you know, all these different things, um, there's no comparison between a trumpet, a flute, a, a violin, and a bass drum, but yet they're all in, in an orchestra, and without all of them working together, it doesn't come off. Okay. But yet none of them practice anybody else's part. They only practice their own. So, okay. the, yeah, so the, the, that's really the whole basis of everything that exists. Um, in, in in the whole world, and Glenn Beck is just a part of that. Okay, um, uh, Mormonism is just a part of that. You know, the Catholic Church, whether you're talking about the different uh, factions within, whether it be the Jesuits or the Vatican or the Knights of Columbus or the Knights of Malta, um, they don't have to work in sync. They don't even have to know what's on their uh, everybody else's sheet music for them to be able to accomplish whatever they're going to accomplish. So wow. <laughs> now let's take it a step further. Um, when I was a kid, I was in band, and we went to some of these contests um, and, and that were really cool. And one of them that I remember the most was 
and, and I don't even remember where it was at or, or what music we did, where we had like, there was like 12 bands, okay, and they all uh, were grouped into their regular group as a band normally is with our um, uh, orchestrator in front who was then looking over at a TV screen or a projection um, at, a, at another orchestrator who was actually getting all the bands to play different forms, their own sheet music separately from one another to put the whole thing together. But it was that one guy who controlled all the, the band instructors, which controlled all of us, that made the whole thing come off and look perfect, but yet we had no idea what anybody else's music was because we couldn't see their sheets. We couldn't even hear them. <laughs> you know, we could only pay attention. But it, it was a, it was a wonderful sound that that the accomplishment, and that's how the world works. <laughs> well, Pat, who do you think our conductor is then? <laughs> um, I, I can't put a name on it, but I can put a concept on it. The concept is thousands of years old. And the concept um, is uh, total despotism, total feudalism under a messiah which is trained by the organization to be put in place w at any time. And there have been, uh, all the time, they've had all kinds of trained messiahs throughout history ready to pull on. So in case something happens to one, or maybe he doesn't work out the way you want him to, as far as train of thought, you can put the one in there that would make the biggest difference. Wow. Any any names you want to drop on there? I mean, anybody? Well, I can name some of the messiahs over history uh, that that really stand out. Um, I, and I can't remember the first guy's name, but uh, this guy was... Uh, this, but the second guy that I can think of is um, Zabati Savi, and he uh, declared himself Messiah in 1666. Okay, um, he was uh, studying under I can't remember the the, the guy's name uh, a form of um, um, Zoroastrianism um, and uh, uh, the Talmud and the Kabbalah, and he put it all together in a different form. Yet I cannot find anywhere where it talks specifically about what that different form was, only that it was different. <laughs> but oh, right. so, yeah, so so this is in um, uh, 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 in Israel area. Okay, uh, so he went to Jerusalem to get all the elders of the. Uh, Jewish church to uh, you know to to declare him as such, and they threw him out of town, and so he ended up having to flee the country. So he fled over to Turkey, and you know he's got two million followers. So everybody and his brother thought this guy was great because in 1666 in the Middle East, and you got two million followers. That's like having a billion followers today. Right. You know, if if you translate the percentage of people, you know, right. it's like a, a billion. <laughs> yeah, so so the 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 uh, you know Mos Islam was was all, already big at that time. It had been big for uh, roughly 800 years or thereabouts by then uh, in that area. So there was competing religions, and they, and and they didn't call them Jews. I don't believe at that time either. They were they had other names, but you know that's what we think of. So that's what everybody writes down. Okay, right. so he fled to Turkey, and all of a sudden, the the uh, head of Turkey thought, saw thought, saw a threat to his authority. So he called uh, uh, Zabadi Zavi in and says, "Listen, you're either going to uh, convert to Islam right here and right now, or we're going to cut your head off." Because uh, listen, I got nothing against you. You know what you're doing is fine. You're following the Kabbalah, which is what we follow. On top of that, but you're threatening my power, so you got a choice. So he converted right then and there. And the idea was is that by him converting, then that would send a message to his followers, according to the the, the ruler of Turkey at that time, that this guy was no great uh, messiah. Okay, that was the whole point of doing it. So. He did that, but he continued to uh, uh, follow his practices that uh, he developed. 
um, from his predecessor and uh, by night. Okay, so he was uh, Muslim by day and he was uh, a uh, Talmudic Kabbalist Jew by night. And in order to prove that you were, you were to be like him, where you would be whatever you needed to be in order to keep yourself alive and out of trouble during the day, and uh, a true practicer of the religion by night, um, he required a few things to prove your loyalty. Okay, And those people, even to this day, are called the wife swapper Turks. <laughs> because he made you have sex with your mother or your child or your neighbor. Um, in or in public, in order to prove your loyalty to his um, sect. That was the um, second Messiah. Uh, no, no, no. There have been many before that, but these are the ones that sticks out of my mind because the the reason why he sticks out of my mind is because even to this day we use his first name Zabati um, as. Uh, a slang representing someone who is whatever they need to be by day, but they're uh, bloodthirsty, Talmudic, Kabbalist um, uh, Jews by night. And now, we call them Sabbateans. Have yeah. you ever heard the term Sabbateans? They're talking about uh, Zabadi Zavi, and that's why they refer to him as that. Interesting. Now, was he an actual Jew without being like you know, uh, one of those people who just blame the Jews for everything. Um, but he was an actual Jewish person. He was the Jewish religion. Well, um, see, I hate the term Jew because it doesn't tell you anything. It just uh, refers to something that is so vague that it's actually the term Jew is used to cover up what is really going on. <laughs> So let me put it more precisely to you. <laughs> the, the practices uh, of that, this culture that existed thousands of years ago, all the way through Zavi and to this day, um, have certain practices that set them aside that has caused them to be run out of over a hundred countries throughout history. Okay? And right. those practices are um, um, uh, pedophilia, Okay. Uh, also, the, you know the Easter ritual. I don't know if you're familiar with the Easter ritual, which uh, came out of uh, Mesopotamia. They, they, they're. This is the group that founded that. Do you know what the Easter ritual is? Where they, uh, they have an orgy, and then a year later, when the child is three years old. Uh, so uh, they uh, then uh, hold it by the legs and cut its throat and drip the blood of the three-month-old baby onto the uh, the eggs of the chickens or whatever and colors the colors the eggs and I part of the never heard. you haven't heard this stuff never heard of that never well I, I hope you never hear it again <laughs> quite honestly because it's absolutely ridiculous really disgusting is that where the colored Easter eggs come from Yep. Oh my God. And there's much more to it than that. Okay. Plus, remember, I was telling you that they uh, they don't uh, 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 believe that a Messiah is born. They believe that a Messiah is trained. Okay. Uh -huh. So they're always looking for training a Messiah. Well, first of all, um, they use the practices of the great mystery schools, which were trauma-based mind control. Okay, and what that means is is that they would uh, create situations where you create mental and or physical uh, abuse to condition an individual so that they react in a way that is the response that is desired for uh, someone that can rule over others. Okay, and, and this is what the the, this is what the ancient mystery schools were all based on. Okay, so they start that practice um, at virtually damn near at birth, and they know by the age of three which category a child will grow up into, and they keep working on that um, all the way up to three. You know, underneath the uh, the Talmud, um, uh, a child uh, can regain its virginity um, up through the age of three. So that'll give you some idea how they, what trauma I'm talking about here. <laughs> oh my God. 
with this me. is where your pedophilia comes in. This is why they're trying to make pe pedophilia, the man boy love thing, legal. You know, this is the goat practice in Freemason is all based on this shit. I mean, so that's not just that's not just somebody being ugly about a group and making up stuff. That's like legit. That's that's something that they're okay with that they've been doing for thousands of years. They're going to continue to do. They're doing it today. It drives the agendas um, that we see. Um, it, you know, I, I wish I didn't know any of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I wish I didn't either. <laughs> now I'm never going to look at babies the same. Oh, and they they do this for the rest of their life. I mean, they 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 hunt down children um, yeah, as a sport because what you have to do. Um, um, have you ever been in a management capacity? Yes. Okay. Have you had? Um, experiences where you were over a lot of people. Yes. Okay, 20. then. All right, great. Then you're going to understand exactly what I'm going to tell you next. Okay. When you're uh, um, in management and you're over 20 people and they're sitting out in front of you in chairs and you're standing up there in front of them, you really, uh, for the most part, as a general statement, you don't see anybody you see them all and right. that is the group so yeah. in other words you separate in your mind the ability to connect with an individual within the group because your instruction is to get the group as a whole to come up with a desired outcome exactly yes okay right right so let's take that concept that you understand totally very well to the extreme Okay, we want to make sure that you never see anyone as an individual. I see where you're going. Okay? Yep. And, we're getting, and we're doing, we're continuing our trauma-based mind control by getting you to chase down others as uh, deer or hogs or doves in the woods. And you're going to catch them and sometimes, and maybe sometimes you're going to kill them or maybe sometimes you're going to rape them or... You, you see what I'm saying? Because you're not going to go after an individual. You're going after um, uh, an animal or what they they call goyim, which goyim is you know is the term meaning cattle. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So have you ever heard that term goyim? Did you know that it oh, meant yeah. cattle? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, people throw that around a lot, so I had to figure out what that was real quick. Okay. So so that's the extreme that we're doing. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this, okay? And now that you're, we're, we're gonna keep moving you in that direction because the less you see others as people, but as a group, the better off that you are, okay? And then, but the problem is, is that when you train these people to be this, okay? There's a chance. There's a slim chance. Um, that they could all of a sudden see the errors of their ways and reform, right? And then what are they going to do? They're going to rat you out, right? Yeah. Uh, because you got them going on this stuff, and they're doing terrible things to prove that they believe that the that the everybody else is part of the of their herd, right? Yeah. Or you know, the, the, in other words, they're training you literally to be a people farmer. So that you're actually dealing with livestock, and they say as such. You've heard this before. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sure you have. Yes, and, and this I'm is. I'm bored by this though, because I, I, when you put it to me as putting being in charge of the, you know, my 20 people, I envision myself standing right there looking at them, and I see what you're saying, how they keep doing that in different, in in, in higher up degrees more and more and more and uh -huh. I see the result of just how we're treating each other uh -huh. uh, and how we're being treated um, it seems to me that all these people and and it's usually the people I focus on are the ones who tell us you know these are the politicians the elite and stuff and they they pick out a group and they say this X X group I care about you I am looking out for you um, but I don't think I never get the feeling that that person saying that really sees them as individuals, just as the group. And it kind of it, it makes me think that, you know, you're I mean, how can that supports what you're saying to in my mind, you know, that. 
Oh yeah, yeah th 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 this yeah. stuff is this stuff is not rocket science. This is yeah. this is definitely not rocket science. This is um, <laughs> learning how to take advantage of of another person uh, in, in such a way that it, you're part, you're underneath the orchestra in doing so. Right. So you're not reading off the same sheet music as the guy next to you, but you all got to be going in the same direction. Okay? Yeah, I get what you're saying. So it is orchestrated. Even if you don't know you're being orchestrated, you are orchestrated. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I want to continue on because I, I got to I gotta make the point so you understand this because this is absolutely critical um, that you could have somebody that you're, you're training up or they're training up, whoever. We're going to say we're training up for, for the most part. We're going to be the orchestrators here. We're training them up, but we don't want them to turn. We don't want them to get to receive Christ and turn and become um, Christ-like and then rat us out and throw us in jail or persecute us in any way, right? Because we'll run from that, right? <laughs> and where are we going to run? They're going to, they're going to catch us, okay? So what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to trap the individuals that we're training up in this uh, philosophy so that there's no way in hell they will ever um, um, uh, turn, okay? And if they do turn, we will kill them immediately, okay? Um, that's one of the things you need to do. You need to learn. You need to read. Uh, there's many books on this of the actual rituals of the first three degrees of Freemasonry, and you'll understand, you know, that they, you, t you take a blood oath the moment that you join uh, Freemasonry, <laughs> you know. In other words, if you turn on them, if you tell, you're dead. <laughs> and, and, and that's for real. That's not just old time. That's not just the way it used to be. That's still to this day. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Okay, so, Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We need to trap them in such a fashion that they can't get out of this deal. They're stuck in their position of hurting the cattle in the fashion that we want them to. So what are we going to do? We're going to get them involved in these rituals um, where they're going to be part of the baby killing. We're, they're going to be part of the satanic ritual. We're going we're gonna to have them believe that they're different than the others. We're going to call them uh, Luciferians in this group. In this group, we're going to call... Uh, uh, Freemasons, and this group we're going to call Scottish Rite, and this group we're going to call uh, Satanists, and this group we're going to call them Wiccans, and this group we're going to call them Knights Templars, you see? And we're going to get them involved in these rituals where they've done something that they will go to jail for underneath normal criminal prosecution. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying, and the division makes sense because, um, like, I in the military that's how the military works you know we have um our unit will know what we're uh, you know detailed to do and then it's our squad specifically or our platoon specifically has a, a specific detail but we don't we generally know what the other you know the rest of uh, the you, world doing. you only think you do and i'll give you an example yeah. of that at the end of the golden gate bridge on the south shore sits a military base that is now closed do you know anything about that I don't, and I should probably. Yeah, it, uh, it was closed down after it got out. That underneath, you know, that's been there since the what the 1800s or whatever, uh, and it's been protecting that bay as a military uh, facility. And so they have it's all undermined with tunnels uh, where they could roll in and out uh, guns to shoot ships coming and, and so on. It's fortified for air defense attacks and so on. And so there's all these tunnels. There's so many tunnels, nobody knows how many tunnels there are yeah. underneath them. Matter of fact, the, 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 the maps that show the tunnels don't show the old ones and so on. And for uh, dozens of years at least, they were performing these rituals that I speak of that uh, include terrible things. Uh, such as murder and pedophilia and, and all kinds of terrible things in in this. And they were utilizing the children from the military base pr uh, sc uh, school, the preschool and the kindergarten. So they were actually doing this stuff. To, 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 they were doing this. It was in the news and everything else. There's lots of information on it. Most of it you don't want to know, but you need to know that it existed.
Yeah, I, when I did read that, and I yeah, did. so there was a cult that came out of that, and, and I can't remember what the freak's name was, but you know, after this freak who was running this this uh, at the at the time that it closed, uh, running this satanic organization in the military, uh, started uh, different military groups that uh, that part of their ritual was um, to be involved in these types of things. So you know, these skinhead. Uh, you know, I think they were Marines, if I'm not mistaken. One of the groups that has really been written a, a lot about, uh, skin, they were taking part in this stuff and did for many years after the base was closed. If they're still not doing it today, I'd be shocked. But the head of that di did all kinds of things, like he had his his face altered and his and implants and so on, and he was running. Uh, operations in, within the CIA doing this shit. So, in other words, um, he was on the Oprah show dressed this way. He was on all the talk shows back in the 80s. Um, you know, everybody, that this is what they <laughs> do without alluding to the uh, illegal activity that they do within the military. Wow. Yeah, and to, well, and to, to think that was the only time that takes place in the military is probably... Um, a little naive, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, well, up in West Point, I I have studied that one, and there's the underground tunnels there. That well, I haven't heard any stories of uh, you know child abuse um, from in the underground tunnels, but these are old, old tunnels up there. And um, but I have heard of you know supposed um, murders that have taken place there, and um, code type murders, you know, for old plebes, you know messing with the wrong thing and breaking codes but um those are all just stories that you know so um, what does this have to do with glenn beck so i'm, I'm getting back to glenn beck okay so here's what happened they, he's he's doing the news show and he wants to talk about this that and the other uh while he's working at fox news and as his story goes they tell him no they tell him no and he didn't like that, and so he then one day walks into the uh, owner's office, and he and he says, you know, this is it. I've had it. I'm done. I'm going to be leaving, and I uh, wish you the best, and and uh, and so on. That's his story. And then he goes out, and he starts this um, uh, media where he's at today. Right, which is a multi, multi, multi million dollar because he has no shareholders. Multi million, well, he didn't have until like two years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, so he was getting it all. So, how did that happen? You know, whether or not he knew it or not, he was being orchestrated to go off and become what he wanted to be. Well, at that time, was he? He had already uh, recruited into the Mormon church. Okay, when he got married. So in other words, this is his what second or third wife or whatever. Yes, yeah, second. This is the first. This is one of the things that they have always done for thousands of years. Is they plant in like uh, do, I don't know if you know the story of uh, Muhammad. Okay, Muhammad was, as the story goes, whether he existed or not, I don't know. Okay, but the story says that he was like. 15 or 20 years younger than this woman that he worked for, which was a, a nun for the Catholic Church, and she was the one who enlightened him into what he was to be. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? So they plan, in other words, this as it depends on who you listen to, but if you listen to um, uh, I can't, some of the, uh, I can't remember what the name of the bishop was from the 50s, who, uh, what was the guy's name, the Pope who was supposedly... Uh, uh, Hitler's Pope is what they called the guy. I can't remember what his name was. Uh, told him that the, the story that they started the uh, Muslim Church with this gal, and this is how the whole thing took place. You know, so in other words, they used a woman to lure in to to plant the seeds of how this whole thing gets going to get it off the ground and and roll with it, and then they fund the organization through the wife. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. To, to cover the money. Now, as a matter of fact, to this day, and as far back in history goes, underneath the Jewish religion, uh, whereas in the Christian religion, the, the, the wealth of the family goes to the oldest son, mm -hmm. 
the wealth of the Jewish family goes to the oldest uh, daughter because she will change her name when she gets married to cover up the path of the wealth. Oh, shady. <laughs> So, so now we're back to going back now, <laughs> okay? So these are some of the things that, and he's uh, a high elder in the Mormon church, which he couldn't be unless he was caught up in this stuff. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they wouldn't allow it to happen. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, so sorry for the long explanation, but no, it's but pretty wild trip. <laughs> incredibly wild. That's, that's a wild trip. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much more you can stand to that, but <laughs> I, you're blowing my mind. But it, it already started. I, I had, I felt like I knew, but I, I again, I didn't know all of it, and I didn't know the connections. That I, I feel like I thought there were connections, but I didn't know it went that deep. And wow. <laughs> oh God, it, that's I, only the tip of the iceberg. I'm just gonna say that, Pat. I was like thinking, oh my gosh, he he just scratched the surface for me. He really didn't even do. He really didn't even tell me an inch of the things that he knows. <laughs> I I'll tell you, it brings me and my wife to tears almost every day. The stuff we know because we we, we know this stuff and, well, and we don't know anybody that we can talk to about it because. Well, this is your platform. You should you should start making videos. <laughs> uh, I did make videos. Okay. Uh, and I had to take them all down because I couldn't afford not to. I mean, they blew up my computers, and I just can't. Uh, you know, that has to do with that chemtrail stuff. You know, I just oh. um, they were spraying chemtrails every day. I started on uh, January first of this year, and every day. Uh, um, I put out uh, a video uh, showing them laying down over my head here uh, chemtrails. Wow. And then one day it, it dawned on me that um, I had seen that this gal who was a, a chemical hygienist that, uh, who lives not far from me, I guess, um, who became a whistleblower on these chemtrails stating that when she was in the Air Force, she was in Georgia and I think Nebraska or Kansas, and she was checking in questionable uh, contents w that didn't have a, a use. And when she questioned about it, they kept transferring her. <laughs> and that was her job to keep track of this stuff. I mean, that was her job. And so she wasn't supposed to know this stuff. And so that's when, I, you know, uh, I got pissed because I thought, well, maybe it's military aircraft. How could I tell? Because I don't have an expensive telescope. How mm -hmm. could I tell? Well, one day I was watching this guy from England who has a cottage in France who does chemtrail videos uh, holding up his iPhone with an app on it showing, and he points it at the plane so you can see the plane over the top of his iPhone in front of his hands, you know, and you can see a, a map showing the that plane on it. So I got to searching on the internet, and I found what apps there were that did that. And uh, I didn't have an iPhone, but I could pull it up on my laptop. And uh -huh. so I would go out, and I would look at a plane laying down the, the chemtrails, and I would rush in real quick on my computer and, and zoom in on that area, and the plane wouldn't be there. Uh, and that didn't make any sense to me at all. So I kept doing this. Day after day, I would go out there, and I would see these planes, and, I, and, and they wouldn't be on the, the computer. But all the other planes that flew over that weren't laying down clouds were on my computer. I could see them live, okay? Huh. Um, so then I thought, well, how could there possibly, you know, you have to have a transponder in your aircraft uh, in order for other planes to see you or for the... Uh, the uh, aviation administration to be able to direct your landing when you get to the airport. So how could these planes be flying around out there without having that on? Then it dawned on me, what planes are exempt from having a transponder on? Military aircraft. Right. Every plane that I saw that was laying down did not show up on my laptop. So they were all military aircraft. So anytime one that would fly low over the top of the house as it was spraying, I would 
with the camera on, with, without taking a break, I would go out with my cheap old camera, point it at the plane so you could see that it was spraying, and then I would leave it on. I'd walk into the house, point it at the computer screen where I had the program pulled up and say, see, that plane is not on there. And then I would walk back out with the camera still on and point it up, but yet there's the plane. So, so I get, to, there's no other option. It was a military plane. You just proved it. It's there, yeah, absolutely. So I did about 40 video, videos where I had those mixed in with it uh, between then and March 1st. And I started getting, I think, I don't remember the date, but maybe it was like in March or something like that. I started getting, uh, my, my computer would slow up and the program would go messy sometimes and, you know, glitches and so on and so forth. And then I did it one day and I'm doing it on my laptop, on my lap, and, my, and I thought the computer was going to blow up on my lap. I honest <laughs> to goodness did. That's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, never could recover that computer. So that was know. it, huh? With toast. I think that um, uh, what's her name? Sherry out there is having an issue that they're trying to blow up her computer right now too. <laughs> well, guess what? They have moved their spraying operations from directly over my head, um, someplace now, uh, just a few miles over the horizon, where I can't see them spray as regularly as I, what I did. But the, you know, the chemtrails still blow across every single day. They're just not laid down over my house. And I'm assuming maybe it was me, maybe there was other people, I don't know, that uh, were doing this and uh, raised the red flag so they figured they better, <laughs> you know, move it over a few, a few miles. Well, did you, any, of your friend, any of your friends or neighbors get sick? Uh, from it? Yeah, um, they were getting sprayed too. Yeah, but here's the thing. They, they didn't just start spraying January 1st. They, they've been spraying since the 90s. So it's so, continual. So who would know if you were getting more or less sick, you know, yeah. because it's been going on for such a long time. And the other aspect of that is, you know, through this whole learning experience about what was going on, and I don't want to call myself an expert on this, but I, I, I really have become this because I, I, I understand exactly how the whole process works. Um, and then there was a scientist that came out, uh, I think it was about a month and a half or two months ago, uh, with a peer-reviewed paper um, uh, admitting that they're using coal ash worldwide um, <laughs> spraying from these planes and that's why there's the aluminum, strontium, and barium because the base mix of this shit is coal ash out of the coal-fired power plants. Uh, they're uh, so they're basically trying to kill us intentionally. <laughs> and, well, one day I was out here, I, this blew my mind, so I'm, uh, you know, once you realize somebody's holding your head underwater trying to drown you, you, you kind of really become uh, ultra sensitive to this shit. <laughs> so I, I can't, I cannot walk by a window without looking up. <laughs> oh gosh. And it, one night I, I looked up and directly above the house and I swear to God, I must have saw, I don't know, a dozen, two dozen UFOs. And they were flying around. And, and and I thought, and, and it was so wild that I actually grabbed the side of the house because I thought I was going to fall over um, because it made me so dizzy to see what I was, and I couldn't believe what I was looking at. You know, I couldn't believe it. So I, a minute went by, and I didn't do anything. And the second minute, finally, when I came to my senses, I opened the door, and I said, Carol, come here, quick. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. So she comes running over to look up. And I says, I don't believe what I'm seeing. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? And I didn't tell her. And she says, oh, I, I no, can't. We can't be seeing this. this you know. <laughs> and uh, as the evening went on, I realized, and maybe ten minutes into this, I realized what the hell I was looking at. What I was looking at is they had sprayed uh, chemtrails. They pretty much all dissipated because what happened is, is that they they use. Um, um, a, uh, an amplifier uh, on the uh, the uh, the NOAA weather radar sites. They use an amplifier, which increases the power up where they heat these uh, metal metal molecules in this mix that they spray, which then drives the moisture that's attached to it now uh, up to a, an altitude where the air is flowing in a direction that they want the stuff to go. Yep. 
Makes okay. sense. Yeah, so I didn't know any of this, but it, it came to my mind, and I realized I wasn't looking at UFOs at all. I was looking at, uh, just like when you, in the summertime, when you look across the car hood and that wave yep. of heat, they had the air so hot over my house that I was looking up, it was making the stars look like they were on the other side of that heat wave. That's a well, that next morning, somebody put it on the internet and said, uh, UFO spotted over Streamwood, Illinois. <laughs> now, the neighbor came out uh, while I'm looking at this stuff, and I says, look at that. I pointed up, you know, at, at night. Wow, what do you think of that? And it was starting to dissipate at that time. And to this day, he, he could see it, you know. And won't go, won't go look at, at the uh, YouTube video from that day of the flying saucers over Streamwood. <laughs> yeah, there. Uh, I mean, I think that that's probably one of the easiest. I, I, easiest isn't the right word. That's probably the, the most, um, in my opinion, um, more becoming more acceptable mainstream typish um, theories. Are, you know that's becoming acceptable um, is that chemtrails or some people don't want to hear the word the the words chemtrails they want to he but they'll believe that weather manipulation is actually happening so um, I it's easier to talk to somebody you know at work or you know here or there and you can point to something and go you know when when we were kids and and I guess we're probably close to the same age, but not even, you know, like this, this, you know, have to be the same grade or anything and, and when we were little kids. But I don't remember trails off the back of the plains that just lasted all day. <laughs> um, I grew up in the uh, northeastern Iowa in uh, five miles from the nearest uh, uh, community. Um, on a, a ridge uh, that divided two rivers, so we could see for miles in every direction. And we had uh, a lot of uh, stored grain on site, so we had one of those vertical elevators that you see out in the country, you know, that, that runs the corn up to the top and then sends it down the tubes to the different bends. And that was 70 feet high, you could go up on top of that. Um, and I remember as a kid, um, them doing experiments uh, from airplanes into the sky, but we had no idea what that what, what, what that it was weather related when we were watching it. But you know, so that would have been uh, over 50 years ago. Um, so, so they've been practicing this for quite some time. Oh, uh, one of the first acts of the new government was uh, to spend money on learning or on experimenting with weather manipulations. Uh, that was even before the year 1800. Yeah, I had this. This would have been one of the things that I used to watch on YouTube a lot. So I probably even ran across some of your videos here and there. I, I was really into the whole watching those things because I what chemtrails are, what are these things in the sky? Because I noticed them, and um, I thought that every it was kind of like a done deal. Everybody would have to accept it after the um, Olympics in China, where they actually came out and said that they did in fact manipulate the weather to make it nice so that it wouldn't rain, so that it wouldn't do this. And um, I'm like, well, there. Yeah, but they, they had a billion dollars worth of damage <laughs> because of they accidentally caused it to snow at 45 degrees. <laughs> yeah, they did that. But, I mean, I, I'm just saying, well, they, they actually, while they did their damage, they, they announced publicly that they had this. And, and everybody knows if China has it, then they either got it from us or we have it, and we got it from them. So I mean, it's the same group. Yeah. You know that, that my my story earlier um, is you got to understand, and it's absolutely very difficult to piece this whole together. It's the same group. Uh, there is no them and us. Okay. Okay. There's only them and us on the Goyam side. <laughs> okay. The, I have to accept. <laughs> Yeah, that's hard. That's hard to accept that there, there is no. Um, and I can't remember what's the guy's name from the the leader from South Africa that that died there a year or two ago, and and uh, he was in prison for 30, 40 years, and now that's a that's a holy site to go to that prison. They spent Mandela. All those, 
Nelson Mandela. Mandela, right. So anyway, he died. Well, hell, we found out later that they had him on ice for a hell of a long time after he died, right? And then all the presidents or world leaders uh, fly down to South Africa to, for the service for his death. Well, he was a fucking communist. He's yeah. also a Knight of Malta, okay? And the Knight of Malta is nothing more than another one of these branches, you know? It's the, in the same orchestra. <laughs> the Knights of Malta. I don't know if you're familiar with the Knights of Malta I, or not. I am, and I actually ended up meeting somebody in um, Twitter who um, proclaimed himself to be a um, Knight of Malta. And, well, uh, if he's a Knight of Malta, he knows what's going on, and well, don't believe a word he tells you, because well, he knows I, everything. I didn't, he didn't like me too terribly much, but, um, you know, when, <laughs> when he would talk about it, and I would question him, like, You're, you sound kind of crazy, because I, I, I'm too blunt in the sense that I would just say what, and all my mind like that and um, he would get very offended and he'd be like you need to you know think about who you're talking to and I'm like what do you mean who I'm talking to I'm on Twitter and um, you yeah, so right, had, because they can touch you anywhere yeah well I had to do some investigation uh, it, for myself you know to find out what a Malta is and what a night of it is and that's when I read all that and I was like oh I see <laughs> well, uh, let me give you the 32nd history of the Knights of Malta Okay, um, the uh, uh, Rome had been making pretty good money by running pilgrimages from uh, Europe, you know, the Papal States, over to Jerusalem. Okay, and I can't remember what the name of that island is. I think it's Corsica. Was where most of the uh, 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 people that were that owned the the, the boats that they would, um, you know, sail these people off to the promised land for a pilgrimage, you know, and then they get over there and then they'd sell them, you know, pieces of the cross or bones of the uh, of yeah. the saints and yeah, so on and so forth. After the spear and all that stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this was a long time ago. This is uh, back, you know, uh, four, five, six, seven hundred, you know, that time period, eight hundred, right. that time period. Okay, and... Uh, so anyway, uh, that they couldn't do that because uh, the Muslims moved in over there, and and uh, so they needed to reopen that because they needed the funds to fund the the uh, Roman Empire, which you know by then the Roman Empire was done, but that was all a lie because the Roman Empire is still in today. They just went north, okay. But so anyway, they needed those funds, so they got together uh, these. Uh, boat captains or the, the, the people that had made a good living and hadn't for three or four hundred years uh, from the uh, west coast of Italy and from Corsica and from the north edge of Sicily and knighted them and they became uh, the Knights of St. John and off to the Crusades they go and, and they're going to fight for you know, whatever and and uh, reopen the route, route so the pilgrims can, in, at peace, go to the promised land again. And so they were over there for about 150 years or thereabouts, and then they got kicked out. You know, the Muslims beat them out. You know, there was the back and forth and the back and forth, and there's all kinds of other stories in there, but I'm going to skip all of them, okay? So they get kicked out, and they need a place to go, okay? So the, the king of France, which there was some... Uh, a controversy and who really was the Pope at that time, you know, they had the Pope in Rome and you had the Pope in France and so on. So the King of, of France says, all right, you guys need a place to go. You were doing pretty bad things over there to so those Muslims and, you know, people hate you because you were living high in the hog while you're over there, higher than me, the King of France, you know. So I'll tell you what, if you can take the Isle of Rhodes, you can have it. That will be yours if you can take it. So they go in with their ships and they kick off the Muslims. And to make a very, very, very long and detailed story short, they were in the Knights. They became no longer the Knights of St. John. They were the Knights of Rhodes. <laughs> Change the name. You know, now they won't persecute us for what we did, right? Yeah. So they're, they're the Knights of Rhodes. Then the king of France says, your job is to keep the Muslims from coming any farther uh, uh, closer in any way, shape, or form you can do it. 
Okay? And he gave them, I think it was eight ships. So they became the great sailors of the sea, and with their eight ships, they were able to hold back the uh, Islamic movement out of Europe from coming a, from Turkey into, into uh, Greece. And they were so great. And then one day, 150 years later, or thereabouts, the Muslims then came in and kicked them off the island. Well, it didn't, wasn't that simple. They were allowed to leave with uh, anyone that wanted to go with them and all their riches. Because remember, they had been raping every single ship that was in the Mediterranean. They had been uh, uh, setting fear on every uh, um, uh, Muslim country and been going in and stealing all their riches. They had more gold and more silver and more uh, 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 everything than anything that any king on earth had. And so that was the Knights Rose. So they left with their 50 ships, but one of the ships that had all this stuff somehow disappeared. Um, you know, so it was only the people uh, left uh, because they lost at sea their ship that had all their valuables in it. Yeah, I believe that. No, yeah. I don't believe that. Where do you think that went? So, so they went to Syria, or, or, or not, uh, uh, Sicily, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, and became... Uh, uh, fugitives because the Pope didn't want them there. They needed a place to go, so the Pope says, "All right, you can have the night, the the, the uh, island of Malta. If you can uh, take it, you can hold it, you can have it." So, boom! They no longer are the Knights of Rhodes. Uh, <laughs> they're the Knights of Malta, so they don't have that stigma of the terrible things that they did, whether they were the Knights of Rhodes and hated by the world. <laughs> No longer will they be hated because they no longer have that name. And, and you know what? It's a Malta. I, thank you. That was a very, very to the point and good detailed description of how it happened, um, just as I remembered it, reading it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, what's interesting is that that is not a different way to do things than it is today. Not so different anymore. It, it's been the same way today. They just changed the name and... Um, same people, same same operation, modus operandi. Let's put it that way, but it's just a different name. <laughs> oh yeah, it's been. If you uh, the more you read history, the more you find that it continues to repeat itself. And you know they say that history never repeats itself, but it rhymes. Well, uh, I'm stretching it, and I think it repeats itself identically. It's a, like a playbook. You know, they only got eight plays in this book or whatever the number is, and when they get done with eight, they go back to one. <laughs> yeah, we're dealing with some people who um, are probably, which is hard to imagine, and this is no offense to you, but even more knowledgeable than what's going on than you are. Which is crazy to think because you're blowing my mind, and I don't think there's probably anything you don't know something about history. But I think that there's people who are, um, you know, intricately involved that they're actually part of it. You know, they're they're part of it. The workings that have been going on for thousands of years, um, and they know. Well, don't don't get me wrong. I hate history. I really do. Everything about history makes me sick. And the reason why I hate history is because everything that has ever been written down has been rewritten so many times that it is inaccurate totally. And, and, and so who knows what the real history is? I mean, you have to go through, uh, like for example, in my research, um, my frustration was so much, made me so mad that I had to stay with it because I had to crack the son of a gun. But, you know, who, who would be so arrogant as to believe that they could beat the system that's been developed for thousands of years to hide what real history is, you know. So even even my stories, I don't know if they're real or not, but I got like six or eight or ten stories for every that I've got each piece of information from to compare them and come up with my own conclusions, which may or may not be right. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's important to um, have people like you that even uh, hate your history, <laughs> hate knowing all the history. But we have to have you because um, I can read a book, I can I can read a history. But but if I don't have um, 
you know, somebody who can help me say that, oh, well, let me tell you about this because this, this isn't going to be in your history book, but it's connected to this, you know, and you know that part. You know how to connect the dots. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that we, people should rely on people like you because that's a heavy burden. But if we don't have you, how are we supposed to, you know, at least get to a hint of how to connect the dots because you're showing it very simply and in a very quick time you you've managed to cover like the existence of our people <laughs> well, let me let, let me tell you how this touches us in a very real way okay in a very real way uh it's easy to understand now that you know that everything is orchestrated okay yeah um the Freemasonry system in the United States is very old, and I don't want to go into the history, but basically uh, the first two lodges were put up right around 1600, and all the two people in them uh, were Jews, and the two that weren't were the Catholics that they were selling the slaves to. <laughs> so it's a very old system. It goes back a long time before George Washington, you know. Each state has... Uh, its own orient. So in other words, there's 50 orients roughly in the United States. Okay, so every town, every community has its uh, Freemason Lodge in it um, throughout the country. Every town has one. You know, it might not be pretty or fancy, but they got one, right? Some of them are pretty and fancy. So they have what they call their Grand Orient. Okay, because they're called orients. They're each, each state. So I'm going to talk about the state of California. Okay. The state of California is a pretty pretty terrible place, right? I mean, you got Hollywood there, right? Remember I talked about the the uh, the uh, the the wand of the orchestrator? Well, yes. guess what his wand was made of? Hollywood. Hollywood. <laughs> right. So Hollywood is is really orchestrating the total creation of what the attitude, the mentality, the education level, the, 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 the spiritual level, everything of the entire country is directed by the wood of the holly in California, which controls the music industry, the, the uh, movie industry, uh, you know, the uh, Broadway is directed out of Hollywood. I mean, everything comes out of Hollywood, right? Right. Right. So we are a product of Hollywood today, right? Exactly. Our so the grand, the grand Orient, yeah, exactly. The Grand Orient is located in San Francisco uh, for California. Okay. okay. Now, I was telling you about this base that's on the s south side that's closed now, uh, okay. or excuse me, the, the, yeah, the south side of the, of the Golden Gate Bridge, which just right. a few blocks from there. Uh, the Masonic Hall of California. Okay, so let's say you're standing on the on the steps at the street, uh, and you look off to uh, you're looking out at the street, uh, the buildings to your back, about 25 to 80 feet, something like that, off your right hand sits the oldest, biggest. Uh, Catholic cathedral and boys' home in the country, maybe. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Okay. Well, I was talking about this goat stuff, right? I was talking about the pedophilia. California, San Francisco has a web page for missing adults. They have no web page. They have no information source for missing children. Okay. Now, are you familiar with uh, Bohemian Grove Club? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you walk about three minutes, you go to the corner on your right, which is the 15 feet from your right hand, and you turn right, you walk three to five minutes, and you're in front of the Bohemian Groves Club. If you, instead of turning to the right, you walk to the right the other way, uh, uh, you know, right directly right without turning farther right, the next right, you'll walk to the, what the hell is it, the, the man-boy-love uh, um, headquarters. 
Oh, Nambla, yeah. Yeah, okay. If you walk past the Bohemian Grove Club, a half a block on the opposite side of the streets, sits the Olympic Club. Now, do you know what these places are? The Olympic Club controls virtually all professional store, sporting events, gambling worldwide. I had no idea. This wow. is California. This is San Francisco. Why is San Francisco different than any place else? Because of the fucking Freemasons. It's very right. good. So, they, so they, they've got their children there that they can ritually use directly across the street, and nobody reports them, okay? I mean, this is some sick shit. I, I mean, I don't even know if I want to go on to tell you the rest. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like hearing about how, you know, when kids get abused. I don't, I don't, I know I need to be a grown-up about it and think about it, but I don't even like to think about it, and... You know, I, I believe you. I believe the other people who have written and researched. And uh, that's, um, I don't even know what to think. I I can't believe, I, it's, it's gross to me. That's all I can, it makes me sick. So. Yep. There, and there's, there, there's, and you're, you're just, you're not even getting the, you're not even getting the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> but yeah. so what does this have to do with Glenn Beck? <laughs> because he could not be where he is because anyone is allowed to be where they are, okay? Remember, we are their crop. They farm us. And I don't mean that in a figurative sense. I mean that in a real sense. Absolutely right. real as real can ever be. So you're... You are people then chosen to be um, the, let's put it this the best way I can think of it to be the missing children are those children chosen are you know are is everything done is it common core from the beginning of life <laughs> it always has been there okay. has never been a time in history when it has not been well how does some of us have it pretty okay but not great, you know, but we don't, you know, but they let us get by. Or is there just always been a mass of like middle ground kind of people? Do you remember when you were a little girl in school and you might have been in first, second, or third grade and, and some of the, and it was show and tell time or whatever and the yeah. kids are getting up and they're talking about what their dad does or what their mom does and so on. And the teacher then squashes the whole thing by saying, you know, not everybody can be a fireman. Not everybody can be a ballerina. Not everyone uh, can, can be a, 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 a wealthy business person. You mm -hmm. know, we need people. We need janitors are important. We need street sweepers. We need uh, people to harvest the crop in the field. We need everybody. Right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. That's why... You know, they you need that. That's what they're telling you. They they need, you know, everybody at every level. So they're not gonna do, you know, they're not gonna, you know, wipe out the resource base diversity because that would hold them back from getting to where they've gotten today. So in other words, they don't want to make a whole bunch of firemen. They don't want to make a whole bunch of lawyers. They just want to make. You know, they need somebody to play the flute and the clarinet and the trumpet and the cornet, the bass trombone and the regular trombone and the and the strings and so on. They need somebody at the, in, in every in, instrument. Like for example, when I was um, uh, in I think time was sixth grade, and it was the summer camp cornet. <laughs> and, and they were asking what instrument if we wanted to continue in band and what our parents could afford for instruments and what we wanted to play. Well, I wanted to play the drums. <laughs> and he, he says, well, I understand you want to play the drums. We already got a half a dozen other people playing the drums. We're not letting anybody even try out for the drums unless they played piano since they were like five. Oh, gosh. Right. So that's kind of how it works. So in other words, some people, they're going to see 
that they have certain uh, background or characteristics or breeding or whatever the hell the characteristic is that they're looking for. And that, that's what they're going to be groomed in. And they're going to be groomed in that area. Uh, and I mean that literally. But the people that are grooming them for that don't even know that this system exists. Well, they don't even know what they're doing. You see what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying. That goes back to what you said. They were standing in front of the people they were managing, 20 people they're managing, and not knowing. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, you don't see them as an individual. You see them as a collective and or as a group. And, yeah, it, it, may, it all connects. It's all connecting, you know. It's so disgusting. It is. It's, it's very disgusting. And what's what's worse is that there's people who will never know the, the just won't ever know that this we're out here talking about it. You know, that if they even heard a whisper of it, they'd call us those nut people, you know, the conspiracy theorists or something, you know, oh, you're just nutty. The odds are about 99% that no one will ever meet someone that knows what I have just expressed to you. Oh, well, thanks for putting us all in jeopardy. <laughs> 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 you can come on my show anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, it's just terrible stuff. I just, it's just terrible. It's very much a burden. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here with my wife the other day, and, and we were going through some very detailed stuff about this subject that would take me weeks to get you to the point where you could even hear. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I can't. I says I, I can't imagine what the a world that didn't exist with this in place because there has never been a world where this has not been in place. So therefore, how could you possibly imagine it not existing? And, and what would the world be if if it had never existed? What 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 would we be? We wouldn't have. You know, we wouldn't have cars or planes or roads or maybe even houses. You know, I don't know what the world would be because it, it's, there's never been a time that it hasn't existed. That's, that's pretty amazing. And from right at that point, you can go anywhere with that, though. That could go back to the, has this really been Satan's world all along? Or, you know, from there, or did the, in the Garden of even Garden of Eden. Well, let me really straighten you out right now. You got a misconception that was created by Saint Jerome. Saint Jerome was the one who translated the Greek Bible into Latin. Okay. Now it would make sense, right, that he would translate from Greek into Latin because that's what the Romans spoke was Latin, right? No, they didn't. <laughs> Latin was a dead language. The only people people that spoke Latin were the naked poor uh, that lived in the slums that, that ate the crumbs off the master's table. None of the Romans spoke uh, Latin. Latin was created as a language so that it could be, uh, that was the old language that was modernized so they could speak in front of people and know what, they, without the people that were in front of them knowing what that was being said. So here's what St. George... <laughs> Remember I told you, you know, language, words are the, the biggest weapon that's ever been used. <laughs> okay, so St. Jerome translates the Greek into the Latin, okay, which didn't even exist in a, in a, in a certain form. You know, it was an experiment, really, um, to a certain extent, right? And he, so he translated that... Uh, Lucifer was Satan, basically, and let me, I, 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 I'm not sure I can explain this properly, but to, to make it oversimplified, that the morning sun is Lucifer, right? That was the mistranslation. The morning sun, it, you know, you know, that's what the Freemasons say. You know, you know, God is Lucifer. Lucifer is the morning sun. He is the brilliant, right? That's what the Freemasons say. But that's not right. Because if you look at the Greek, the, 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 it's the morning star. And the morning star is the one that comes up before the sun. And that is Venus. So Lucifer is Venus. <laughs> Actually, you're right. You know, I... Um... 
my friend, you, have you met Influence? Because she yeah. actually showed me that not too long ago, a couple weeks ago, she was pointing that out to me. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I have seen uh, uh, Influence uh, in the chat. Yeah, she's, have, she knows this stuff. She knows uh, a lot about the stars and, and the original worshiping of, uh, like you said, like Venus rather than, you know, Saturn. Also, she was actually went through that. It was a whole, um, it might be on one of Grimm's podcasts, I think. And she went through all of that. It was really neat. I had no idea that, that it was, but it makes sense again, because it's a, a Venus is a woman planet, right? Well, it depends on the time period and the need for it to be whatever they need it to be in order to influence the mind of men, to herd them in the direction that they need to be able to, to harvest them as a crop. Oh. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. We could go forever. We could go forever. It's a rabbit hole, the whole thing. I feel like I'm in a black hole of knowledge. All right. Let me give you a real black hole, Okay. <laughs> This is current right now. It's happening right as we speak. So you want to pull this up on your computer. And uh, it's uh, Delta State University shooting. A professor is shot. Delta State University. Uh, yeah, Miss Mississippi. Oh, I just pull pull up. It. Yeah, pull it up on, yeah. Pull it up on Wikipedia, though. Don't pull it up on the news. Pull it up on Wikipedia. Okay. Delta yeah, Delta State University, Wikipedia. Okay. Uh, now look at the symbol on the right-hand side that, that is the uh, coat of arms or whatever the hell you call it for uh -huh. Delta State University. Okay. And you'll yeah. notice it's two circles with a triangle in the middle yeah. with an eagle over the top with yeah. the uh, – it's the red, white, and blue with the stars – Yep. Okay, with the uh, eagle holding the arrows and the uh, uh, fig leaf or whatever the hell it is, right? Yeah, I see it. All right, yeah. Okay, so I don't know all the symbolism. I know a lot of it, but I don't know it all. But let me tell you what. We know what the pyramid represents because it's on our money, right? Yeah. Okay, and just so you understand that the uh, eagle is the sun, Okay. <laughs> Okay. And the eagle is at the top of that. Okay? okay? So it's the same as on our dollar bill. <laughs> now, go down and it says how many students? So spring of 2015, it says 3,324 students, right? It says 122 staff, right? But if you go down farther, it tells you that the school is only built for 2,000 students. Huh. Okay? It tells you right clearly that it's built for 2,000 students. So why would they put the number 33 oh, in the number of students when it can only hold 2,000? Oh, I got gotcha. uh, you. Well, if, if you pull it up on um, – uh, Dabu7 was the one that turned me on to this, and I did a little bit more research into it. Uh, and, and he did a video just before this call. Oh, okay. okay. And it, it, it says um, the, the actual degree that the university is located on is, uh, well, he put in the number 3333, and it comes up just south of the location of the university, just like, um, just like a, a few miles south of the university is 33.33. .33. It has, okay. it, right here. it has the coordinates right at the top of the Wikipedia page. 33, okay. 44, 31. Yeah. yeah, so 33, 44. So what is 33, 44? Okay. 33 is the total number of bones that you got in your back. Mm -hmm. All right. You got 33. So that's what it represents. It represents your spine. Mm -hmm. Okay. 44, the number 44 is the number four twice. Okay, it might be something else. I don't know all this numerology shit, all right? But for anytime you see a news article, okay, and they say that, uh, and there's a number four in the description by the media, that is the sign telling you that that was a, a ritual hit or a ritual murder or a ritual sacrifice. Interesting. 
So I'll bet you, I, you know, don't take an Einstein to figure out that if you look this university up, 3344, uh, that it has been used throughout history for some famous deaths. I don't even have to look. I know they're there. <laughs> you know what? It might be worth looking into that to see if there is, just so, you know, we can say if we have some connection or not, you know? It makes me fucking sick every time I look, I because I find the answer every single time that I think is there. I just I, I don't even want to look. <laughs> I sure would have you know. never I would have never even known this school existed. You know, I they didn't send me any um you know application you know registration pamphlets to sign up for them when I was getting out of high school. <laughs> well, so. I would just about bet money. Uh, that it was built in 1924, established in 1924. Uh, I just about bet money that it, the donors were high masons, probably Methodists. Yeah. Uh, that probably Methodists, because Methodist, the, the Methodist Church is one of the uh, churches that have never denounced their support for Freemasonry. I, I was born and raised in a Methodist church, and you never met such evil people in all your life. Oh. Yeah, my best friend's a Methodist. <laughs> well, I don't know how they are today, but I grew up in a very small town uh, in the country. I was five, uh, yeah. 10 miles to town, to that yeah. town. And that was the closest big town, and it had uh, 5,500 people. Yeah, she uh, doesn't go to church or anything, but she's just, that's what she was raised as a Methodist, so. Uh, it's just crazy. It's just absolutely yeah. crazy. I, I mean,. I could go on for months without covering the same subject twice on this shit. <laughs> well, here, did you read? Did you read the Wikipedia page for this Delta University? I only looked for that information, and I was afraid to look at the rest. <laughs> they were um, part of the Marshall Plan. I didn't, you know, I'm surprised I haven't heard of this before. Yeah. Anyway, interesting. <laughs> oh, everything yeah. you look at. Uh, now. He, Here's, a, here's something that might interest you that was in the news. Uh, what, what are they calling the shooting of the news reporter and the cameraman uh, that just took place? Oh, yeah. The, um, I call it the Virginia shooting, so I don't know. What the Virginia is. shooting. Yeah, that's what they're calling it. Yeah, the Vir Virginia shooting. Oh, you, you know, the, right, right across the street from there, there was this gal that had her house raided at about 9 o'clock that same morning, and they said that the shooter was there, or, or no, it was right at the same time they raided the house across the way. The shooter was there, and so um, uh, uh, pr Professor Doop um, did a hit piece on her because she did an interview with the media, and, you know, it turned out she was a... Ex-con and all kinds of crazy stuff, and you moved constantly, and she was very discreditable. Well, she got pissed and and fired back at him on social media. Maybe it was Facebook and some other sources too. Well, he got word of it, so what's he do? He calls her or tries to call her, right. and he got all of her mother, and her mother turned turned her on, and he had a phone interview with her and he, she was pissed at him for putting him her down and so on and and so it, there was an interview that went on for about an hour well before it was all said and done with uh, it, it turns out that they were in her house the you know all these different uh, alphabet agencies were in her house virtually at the same time the shooting was literally taking place across the street uh, they, so he was. She was saying that they were there when the shooting was happening. They were already there, or so close that there's no way that all these different agencies could have gotten together, combined, traveled to that location, which is not in the town. It's out in the in in, a, in an area outside of town because they have to haul their garbage uh, off themselves. Right. Right. Uh, uh, it, it couldn't happen, and so much more. You've got to listen to that interview. It's under. Uh, just pull up Professor Doom, and it would probably be one of his last two or three uh, videos. Oh, okay, okay. Wow. Um, yeah. So you're that's going back to that whole. It must, you know, have been. Uh, I would assume that that video would show that it was all that. totally orchestrated. It wow. never happened. Uh, they never came in and and pulled the bodies. They had a uh, military helicopter flying around the thing. There was no blood. Uh, uh, you know. Nobody heard the shots. 
uh, not even the people that were working there at the time, and, and on and on and on and on and on. And on. She yeah, brings all this out, and she, and she had no intentions of looking into this. As far as she was concerned, the whole thing was real. And by the end of the phone call with Professor Doom, she had 180 degreed her opinion of what took place and said it was all fake, it was all phony, and they played me. And you could hear her emotionally change wow. through that interview I, over the course of about an hour. I have always, um, since Professor Doom came on the scene and started really pumping out the videos, um, I, I've only really um, liked his uh, interview skills, you know, the most out of all of everything. Um, I think it's uh, it's brave, and um, I think that that's a really neat thing to do is is get it from the horse's mouth if you can, right? So um, that's yeah, he uh, did a great. I was really upset with him on what the the interview piece or the uh, the information that he was uh, shugging out there uh, on um, um, uh, Grim V's uh, uh, expertise, and it was totally false and misleading. And there, but he wasn't the only one that was in the wrong place giving wrong information on that. There were several of them, and they to this day they've never come out and said, "Hey, we were wrong," you know, even yeah. though it's it's clear that they were. Um, and I always, and because of that, I, I haven't watched him much, but I did watch this one today, and yeah. it was incredible. That was, that was a big mistake on his part. I think he lost a lot of followers for that um, because Grimm clearly had the evidence and, and presented it in a, in a good way, and and um, it's it's still there. I mean, he hasn't. Uh, Grimm has left it there for everybody to see, and and you know you can do your own research from there. But he he pretty much handed it all to you. So yeah, I think that was a mistake. Um, maybe he was under the influence of some other you know people and. I don't know. I don't know why he did that, but uh, well, he was in prison for twenty years. He said so. There may very he very well may be being used by whether he knows it or not by someone. Well, you know, because we, we don't know when we're being used, right? So I mean, even the smartest. People, sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. Right. <laughs> right. Right, and, and 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 it's hard to tell when you're on a social platform, a social media platform, because you know, even though I can see you and you can see my picture, and, and that's me, and and this is my voice, and that's you, and that's your face, and and we're real people. It's still there's still not a connection, um, and you know, you know, you could. You could have been to in, in all that information that you gave me. It could ninety nine point nine percent could be true. You could have thrown in point uh, one percent just to mess with me. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah. I would never yeah. know. I had to trust. And I could have done it unknowingly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, we we live in the the movie The Matrix. Yeah. Is the most real thing that's ever been done. I have to watch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is. I, I want to point you in a direction um, okay. before we end this that I think okay. that is absolutely the most important thing uh, of any of my research that I've ever done, okay? okay. The, the most important thing that I've ever learned, okay? Uh -huh. uh, and... and it doesn't matter if any of it's true or not, okay? It only okay. matters to what people believe is true because people take action based upon what they believe, not what reality is, because it could be non-reality and they still take action on it if they believe it's reality, right? That's great. God, is that a <laughs> crazy statement? Yeah, it's a blind mind thing, yeah. Right, right, right. So, so um, this book is going to sound wild, but it's it's a free ebook. It's called In the Beginning, In the Beginning, by Emmanuel Vlykovsky, V E L I K O V S K Y. Okay. Now his book is the uh, he's a Freemason, right? Uh, he's a Jewish Freemason. Okay. I'm writing that down too. Jewish Freemason. <laughs> yeah, there's a Jewish Freemason, right? Right. Okay. Because all Freemasons are Jews, they just don't know it. Uh, because they have a misunderstanding of what Jews are. But even okay. if you go back to Albert Pike, who wrote the Scottish Rite, uh, 
um, the 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 you know all the the fourth degree on up to the Scottish right. He wrote them all. Um, you know, said that without the Talmud, without the Kabbalah, which are the book of the Jews, Freemasonry is nothing. No. Oh. That's a quote. Okay. That was General Albert Pike. Do you know him? Yeah, that's the he gets the credit for starting the Freemasonry, right? Freemasonry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he didn't actually come up with the idea. It actually came from a, uh, a Jesuit pr a priest out of Kansas City that gave it to him. But yeah, right. no, there. But but this book is a summation of books that have been written over the course of about 150 years about the subject of their belief in what you know planetary and star worship is in Freemasonry. So in other words, it's a compilation of all these writers, these Freemasonry, Jewish Freemasonry writers, about what their summation is, about what their history is, of what their viewpoint is to the different planets, like you know Saturn and and the Sirius groups and you know giants and Nephilim and all, all kinds of stuff. So the reason why this book is important is because you can't understand how they control the mind of men the way that they have throughout history unless you know their stories that they've used to control the minds of men. Because the only thing these stories are used for is to control the minds of men, to be able to harvest their crop, right? Oh, I understand. They have to have tools to harvest real crops, so why wouldn't you have to have tools to harvest man people crops? <laughs> And people are drawn to Freemasonry. Remember, you, they don't come out and get you. They advertise. You have to ask to be one, right? So yeah. they have to have some sort of bait to get you there, okay? So the bait is the mysteries, the secrets, the occult, which is the things that they don't tell you, right? So, yeah. so you need to understand the tools that they use. And until you understand these tools that they use to draw men into them, you can't understand how people could fall into this shit. Yeah. Well, you know what I'd like if um, I'm going to look that up, and and it would be okay, really, yeah. it'd be really awesome if you could come back and maybe um, I don't know when I'll do this again, but the next time maybe I can get up with you on, on the side or something and and see if you'd become come back and tell us a little bit about the Jews. Um, you know, I hear a lot about it, and, and I don't like to get involved in religious stuff, but I, I understand now that it's more than just a religious aspect. Like you're saying, there's people who are Jews that don't even know they're Jews. So um, right. maybe you can get in there and teach me about where that came from, the start of that, and how it how it transformed into, you know, different sects. I, I get the overall picture that you were telling me about how, you know, you're, you're kind of here in, in – just because that's where they needed you to be, and you're you're still a Jew, yet you're you know maybe in a Methodist religion or a Mormon religion, you know, or but you know what I mean. So I w I would love to go into that a little more. And maybe okay, all right, and and I want to leave you with that. We can do that. Okay, I'd, okay. I'd love to do that. Okay, um, and anything I give you is going to be my well-researched opinion. I got to make that clear because I could be wrong on everything. Oh, no, okay? <laughs> I'm asking you for it. I'm, I, I'm grateful that you'd give me your opinion, you know, and, and, and nobody has to listen if they don't like it. So, you right, know, but right, I, right, right. yeah, it's for me. Right, but uh, I, I want to get back to what we were talking about, what you asked a question about earlier, and this is why I went into this whole big spew has all been to head back to this whole point. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that is, you know, Glenn Beck is wanting to uh, bring in the Syrian Christians into the United States, and he's going to march them across the Mexican border, and he's going to give them money that you give to him to make sure that blah, 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 right? Yeah, that's what he said. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, and you know, that, that's probably all true. Okay. So, but here's what you need to know. Okay. If you look, you've seen some of the statues uh, and things, or the pictures of the Vatican, okay? And there's all this uh, pagan stuff everywhere, 
And But if you look at the descriptions on the Vatican and what you're looking at, it all leads back to some saint, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, every, every piece. Even though you're looking at you know, some guy with horns or some woman with 30 breasts, you know, they have a way of figuring out how to connect it back to a saint, right? Right. True. Okay. Well, it doesn't take an Einstein to figure out that they're involved in the same uh, pagan worship that the Freemasons are. And remember, the Freemasons, all Freemasons, whether they know it or not, are Jews, literally, or right. they are Sabbatees. Okay? Right. Whether they know it or not. And they know that they are because they take the blood oath, the first thing that they do, the very first ceremony that they get involved with when joining is the first blood oath. So they know what they're involved in. Okay, so you got all these Muslims that were created by the Catholics, right? Okay. Right. Okay, so you're never going to see any evidence of a Roman Catholic being beheaded or a Roman Catholic's house being marked for destruction or a Roman Catholic's house anything negative from the Muslims. Does this make sense now why? Uh, yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. Right. <laughs> so lots of Jews, die, lots of Jews die. Okay, but they're uh, what's the proper term? They're called shepherdess Jews. Write this term down: shepherdess Jews. How do you spell that? Uh, it's like shepherd. Okay. Except for it's P H. Okay. S H E P H E R D I S or something like that. Shepherdess Jews. Okay, or Ashkenazi Jews, and you know what those are, right? That's yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, that's the ones that came out of Ukraine and Poland, right? Yeah. Okay, those are the two types of Jews that you got. Okay, shepherdess are are um, Arab, they're okay. Arab descent. Arab. Okay? okay, shepherdess are Arab descent. Okay. And then you got the Ashkenazis, and they're you know Polish, Ukraine, uh, Hungary, that area, right? Okay. Okay. The ones that came out of Poland, Hungary, and Ukraine are the control freaks. They're they're the the uh, Talmudic, or you follow the the encyclopedia um, of the book of the elders of the Talmud, right? Uh -huh. Which uh, you probably know the story that comes from supposedly uh, Satan came down to the elders of of uh, Zion while Moses was on the mountain and gave him better information. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, all that stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. They have tried to convert the shepherdess views or shepherdess Jews to their viewpoint unsuccessfully throughout history. Okay. Okay, now I don't know that much about the, the, the shepherdess Jews, uh, what their belief is or how it differs, and I'm going to learn someday, but I haven't yet, okay? But it's different, and the, um, the Ashkenazi Jews have held it against them. If you go to Israel to this day, um, you will find that, sh that those two different types of Jews do not mix together, and that the ones that live in the slums are most likely, uh, if they're lucky they're still alive, are the shepherdess Jews, because they are um, uh, discriminated against. And you can tell them when you look at them, because they have uh, the um, facial characteristics of the Western Asian people, which would be the Arabic people, right? Yes. So they look genetically different, okay? Uh, so, matter of fact, if you look at uh, during the um, the first um, the uh, Russian Revolution, you know, the Bolsheviks, the Bolsheviks were Ashkenazis, and they killed anywhere from depending on who you read. 20 to 100 million people, and I would believe between 60 and 100 million people they killed of their own people. Most of them they starved to death, and there was a lot of Jews that died during that. But yeah, almost every single Jew that died during that time period was a shepherdess Jew. Okay, I knew that. I knew that, and I knew that they, the whole thing, the whole 
issue revolved around Russian Jews before predated the World War II. <laughs> yes, so, it's, it's the, two, <laughs> the two different types, though. The point is, yeah. is that you know the the, uh, the they're going to kill you know the. They're going to kill some Jews during, while they're doing this, and they're going to, you know, call out Israel and this and that and the other and so on. And they're certainly going to die, but they're going to be shepherded Jews that die, and they're going to be non-Catholic Christians that die. <laughs> That's get, my point. I get where you're coming from. I see it. It's interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> and that's why. That's why. So we've got some leaders. We have we we can tag a little lead sign on on two groups at least, right? <laughs> We know that the, the Catholics and the um, Jews have a little something going on. <laughs> well, they do, but the, the, they're not. It, 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 they're just the cello or the flute or the drum or. I, the, I know, I know, but we're we're start. I'm, hey, I'm starting here. I just walked in the the theater. I know. Oh, yeah, you're, you're recognizing the instruments, and that's the yes. most important aspect. And that's that's really uh, that's all I've gotten so far. I, I can tell you when I sit down in the crowd what a flute looks like. I, I'm better at like maybe uh, I'm better at, at Dragon's Band than I am with the orchestra so far. I can recognize <laughs> the guy who's playing in the band and not necessarily the, what he's playing because I don't even know how he creates his music, but. Um, well, let me I'll tell you how, look, look into this a little, let me tell you how music is created. <laughs> oh my gosh, you have, to, you have to check out Dragon's music and then explain that to me. <laughs> All I know is that uh, these same people, whoever they are, uh, control the music industry. We all know that. There's no question about it. I mean, you look at, they use the music videos to tell you as such, to be right. in your faces as such that they know that you know that they are in control and pick whoever they want to be uh, famous and that person will be used until they are done with them. Okay? Yeah, it's pretty obvious now. <laughs> right, 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 right. Not only, not only that, but in fact, the music that they do play is sacred to whatever the freaking religion is that they have, which, I, you know... I think I know what that is, but no one can really know unless you're in on the, the in on the gag, in, in on the gimmick, right? Right, and you said they can be anything. They just uh, they don't know that they're part of the bigger picture so much, right? Well, how many how many times have you heard that a famous uh, musician or famous singer uh, that you know is in the top one on the Billboard chart or whatever? They they sat him down. They uh, interviewed to get to know this person really well, and they said, "Well, how did you become so famous? What was it? What was your turning point?" And they'll let it slip. They say, "I sold my soul to the devil." Yeah, I I have seen the interviews. They didn't sell their soul to the devil. Okay, they joined the Freemasons, and so that their Grand Master then gave them the direction as to where they would go from here. And so they told them what music and the lyrics and the tones that they were going to be used. And nine times out of ten, that music was written by a Jew in Israel in a kibbutz. I, I and when they go out on stage and perform that music, if they're a, prof a professional and they are in the business for the next 35 years, they might be given the opportunity at some point maybe to come out with another song. But for the most part, they'll be replaying their first three uh, favorite albums until the day that they die or are killed. It makes sense. Because that's ritual music. That makes total sense. And you know who told you that? Michael Jackson. Yeah, he did. Death. I He's crazy uh, that how great he was at, at trying to get a message across to us, and and I really and and they they really they played a job on him, man. They they treated him badly, badly, badly. But he was part of it. He he saw he knew what he was getting into the very first. Because here's the thing: when you take the first oath of the Freemasons, you're outside the hall, okay, and you're all, all ready to go. And you got they've taken your clothes off. You know you've got an old shirt on. You got an old pair of pants on. You know you've got um, 
you're a blindfold on, you got a rope around your neck, a, 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 and, and so you know what you're getting into before you ever get into that room. Then you go into that room and you take a, a blood oath with a dagger into your side. So there ain't no question about it. And guess what? Once you've taken that oath, the blindfold comes out, and what happens? You're blinded by the light, the light of the of the morning star, which in your case, the one who's right in your face looking at you is your grandmaster with a, a big bright bulb behind his head. So he blinds you. So he is uh, your Lucifer. He is your Venus. He is your, and you are whatever he says you are. <laughs> as soon as you said that that was that song there's like an old song and i think it was in um days and confused or something i don't know where i remember it from blinded by the light it just popped into my head all of a sudden when you were saying it when you said absolutely. that absolutely <laughs> every song that you listen to from the uh to this day if it's a hit if you start learning what I, the stuff that i'm talking about you will see that every single song talks about nothing other than uh, the religion of Freemasonry. Every song, if it's if it's popular, because it's not allowed to be popular unless it's been approved. Yeah, that was an old song from like a classic rock type thing. I can't mm -hmm. remember who sang that, but yeah, that it actually says "Blinded by the Light." You know, guess what it is. Pretty neat. Yeah. Well, you know what? I like I said. <laughs> I hope that you can find some time and come back, and we can oh, do sure. a little bit more. And um, I got some things to look up and, and, you know, hey, thanks, because, you know, as you could tell, when we first got here, all that I was going to do is just ramble for a little while and then, you know, really not even have a whole lot to think about because I don't want to think about how horrible everything is. Um, but at least Don't talk to me. <laughs> I know. I know. Now I'm going to, every time I see a child, I'm going to cry and. Um, but yeah, now at least I have some, you know, I can get some focus on, on looking up some things and, and at least try to, um, maybe put a, you know, put a, you know, some information in there that, so that I, that I feel a little better because I, I feel like I, yesterday I was on Eric's show and, um, on his panel with them and I just feel like I don't know what to do. I don't, I, you know, I have friends who think you can pick up arms and fight these people. And I think that's ridiculous, but, um, I, and then you have, I have other friends who think, you know, I should just get, and I've been told this quote this weekend, um, quote, just go with the flow. Um, and I don't want to do that. And so I, I, you know, what do you do? What do you do when you find, when you feel like, you know, you, you're looking, you know, you're being used, you know, in other words, what do you do? What do you well, do? Here's, to here's what I want you to do because, you know, and it, it, this is my saying and I hate it, but it's the only thing I can think of is until you know everything, you don't know anything <laughs> uh, because it's so, it's so <laughs> compartmentized, you know, it's yeah. so segregated like a top secret operation. So <laughs> until you know everything, you don't know nothing. So send me your email address through YouTube. Okay. Okay, and I have a letter that I did up for Tara uh, about f Freemasonry, and I have in there like uh, maybe 18 or 20 links of, uh, of both articles and YouTube videos that will give you a foundation where you'll then, after you go through these, you'll know where to do your research at. Oh, that's awesome. That's super awesome. And and kind of neat to know that somebody came before me and was doing the same thing. <laughs> you yeah. already had it prepared. So I'm not the only one out there asking these questions, right? Yeah, but I have yet to find anybody who's willing to do the work. <laughs> okay. Well, like that. So you would be the first. <laughs> was that a challenge? <laughs> you would Did be the you first. Challenge me? But it's very sad, so if you don't want to do it, I don't blame you a bit because I wish I had never. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can handle the kid stuff, but I'll, I'll, I'll give anything a look. You know, I'll, I'll yeah. give anything. Now, I have taken most of that kid stuff off, so it okay. won't be in this, okay? Good. Good. So. Yeah, but I, I, I'd like to know why we color Easter eggs, and now I'm never going to color another Easter egg again, ever. Nope. <laughs> All yeah. right. 
Well, I thank you again for coming by and I'll yeah. that e email. Um, just hang on for one second. I'll get it on the um, Google Plus page there on the side chat. And um, I want to thank everybody who did hang out with us and, and listen. Um, dragging cookies. Um, Javon, it looks like he left a while ago, but it was uh, the rest of uh, anybody I missed. Um, sorry, I know Scully was in and out for a little while. Her computer's really giving her a hard time. Um, but it was nice having you guys here, and I hope that you were pretty fascinated by some of the stuff you heard today by Pad, too. He's, I, I think he's a walking talking historian you know and, it, and it's like when you go to philadelphia and you take the tour around town to the liberty bell and things and you you have that guy with the you know all dressed up in period costume and he tells you about the story of this and the story of that and, it's what, and i'm like yay but we got that with a guy who just got finished mowing his lawn <laughs> So I really appreciate you taking some time and, and talking to me. I met you over on Grimm's show, and, and you're a pleasure to listen to there. And, and I appreciate you even wasting your time with me. And um, the guys Anytime. out there the guys out there in chat are really good guys. I don't know if you know them, but they're, they're good guys. And um, so, you know, it, it, I, I just love it. I'll, I'll look at those links and see if there's anything, you know, that comes to mind that maybe you can have just as much patience with me again if I have questions, and, and we'll do this again for sure. Anytime. And, uh, okay, cool. And, and again, I wanted to rem remind everybody because who's not – who – is here now and who might listen to this later the show is staying up um and i also wanted to cancel that um doomsday the first annual doomsday um live chat we'll do it next year on doomsday and um have some fun uh chips will be provided but I will see you guys around this week and here and there and I got some reading to do and some videos to watch so have a great night guys and uh, send that to me on the, I, I can't I can't find the the side chat and so I don't know what I'm looking at for so, so send it to me on the the uh, uh, private message on the YouTube channel okay I got okay I'll do that I'll do oh. that right now okay well thanks guys and Sherry I'll give you a call later okay bye, bye, -bye.